Welcome to Electron Line. Our next example with the ladder involves friction both on the floor and against the wall right here. So we're trying to prevent the ladder from sliding down. So there's a friction force here keeping the bottom sliding this way. There's a friction force there keeping the portion against the wall here from sliding downward. And the question is, in the arrangement we have here with a length of 10.4 feet for the length of the ladder, 9.6 feet the point above the ground where the ladder touches the wall and 4 feet here the distance from the bottom of the ladder to the wall what will be the friction required or the coefficient of friction required to keep the ladder from sliding all right how do we do that well we could probably start by saying the sum of all the forces in the x direction must add up to zero and the sum of all the forces in the y direction must add up to zero so let's start there sum of all the forces in the x direction must be equal to zero, which is equal to, well, we have this force right here pushing to the right, which is the normal force at A times the coefficient of friction minus the normal force at B. And of course, we can then isolate the coefficient of friction there on that equation. We can say that mu sub s is equal to, when we bring that across, divided by n sub a, that would be the ratio of n sub b divided by n sub a. This will come in quite handy. And we probably don't even need the sum of the forces in the y direction because we have a nice relationship between the two normal forces and mu sub s. So let's try that. The next thing we're going to do is find the moment about point C. So the total moment about C, or the sum of all the moments about C, they must also add up to zero. So how many moments do we have? Well, we have quite a few, because we have these two forces, we have those two forces. We don't have to worry about mg because that goes right through the point about which we try to find the moment. So let's add them all up. N sub b is in a counterclockwise direction, that's a positive, so N sub b times half the distance from there to there. If the total distance is 9.8, half the distance would be 4.8 feet. Now I'll just leave out feet to keep it cleaner. So n sub b times 4.8. Now we have the friction force at b, and that would be the normal force at b times mu sub s, and that also gives us a counterclockwise direction. So plus the friction force at b, which is the normal force at b, times mu sub s, times the distance, that would be this distance right here, which is half of 4 feet, which is 2 feet. Then over here we have n sub a, that gives us a clockwise direction, which means minus n sub a times the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to the line of action, which is 2 feet. And then we have the friction force at a, which um, that also gives us a counterclockwise direction. That would be plus n sub a times the coefficient of friction times the distance, which also will be 4.8 feet. All right. Now make sure we got that correct. So this here would be counterclockwise. This here would be counterclockwise. This here would be counterclockwise, and that's clockwise. So we're good on the signs. Now, what do we do? We're going to combine these two equations to try and find the equation that just solves from mu sub s. And first, what we may want to do is simplify things a little bit by dividing everything by 2. So let's start with there. So we have 0 is equal to 2.4 n sub b plus n sub b times mu sub s minus n sub a. And here we have plus 2.4 n sub a mu sub s. Now, what can we do next? This equation is a little bit tricky to work with, but I think we can do this the following. Let's say that using this, we can say that n sub a is equal to n sub b divided by mu sub s. And we're going to substitute that in here. Let's try that. So we have 0 is equal to 2.4 n sub b plus n sub b times mu sub s minus n sub a and this becomes plus 2.4 n sub a is going to be n sub b divided by mu sub s times mu sub s. And then of course the mu sub s's cancel out. 
and you have a 2.4 NCB plus a 2.4 NCB that cannot be combined. And now we get 0 is equal to 4.8 NCB plus N sub B mu sub S minus N sub A. Next, I'm going to move this and this to the other side, turn the equation around. So we have N sub B times mu sub S is equal to, moving this to the other side becomes positive N sub A, moving this across becomes negative minus 4.8 N sub B. Now the next stage would be to divide both sides by N sub B, then I've isolated mu sub S. So mu sub S is equal to N sub A divided by N sub B minus 4.8, and of course N sub B divided by N sub B is 1, so get minus 4.8. And in addition to that, N sub A divided by N sub B is going to be the inverse of this, which is the inverse of mu sub S, which is 1 over mu sub S. So you have mu sub S is equal to 1 over mu sub S minus 4.8. And if I move this across, so now the next stage would be, I'm going to take a look at it, what's the strategy? So I'm going to have to come up with an equation that has mu sub S by itself on one side, so let's try this. Mu sub S minus 1 over mu sub S is equal to 4.8, or a negative 4.8, can't forget the negative, there we go. And multiplying both sides of the equation by mu sub s, we get mu sub s squared minus 1 equals 4.8, and I keep forgetting that negative sign, minus 4.8 mu sub s. And I think that looks like a quadratic equation now. Let's go over here. So we get mu sub s squared, moving that across becomes plus 4.8 mu sub s, minus 1 equals 0. And now this equation I have to solve for mu sub s, and it is indeed a quadratic equation, which means mu sub s is equal to negative b, negative 4.8, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 4.a squared, minus 4 times a times c, and c is a negative 1, all divided by 2a, which is 2. Simplifying, we get mu sub s is equal to minus 4.8 plus or minus the square root of 4.8 squared plus 4, divided by 2. And this is good because I needed something that was bigger than 4.8 to cancel this out and make this a positive quantity. If that had come out to be negative, it could not have been correct. So 4.8 squared plus 4. Take the square root. Assuming that to be positive, so what we end up here is this is equal to minus 4.8 plus or minus 5.2 divided by 2. And of course, the only plausible solution is that we take the plus 5.8. So subtract from that 4.8 and divide by 2. And we get mu sub s has to be as a minimum 0 0.2 in order to keep the ladder from sliding. So it turns out that, first of all, we needed to find mu sub s in terms of the two normal forces. We were able to do that by taking the sum of the force in the x direction, did not need to take the sum of the force in the y direction, and then to take the moment about point c, the halfway point, so we can eliminate mg, since we don't know what the weight of the ladder is, and then we have an expression in terms of n sub b, n sub a, and mu sub s. We then have to somehow find mu sub s in terms of only constants, and we can eliminate n a and n b by knowing that their relationship, the ratio of n sub b divided by n sub a, is equal to mu sub s. A little bit of thinking, a little bit of algebra, we were able to turn into a quadratic equation, and that gave us the coefficient of static friction. And that's how it's done.